Today, let's talk about this basic relay in Tinkercad. This is a two-part series about the single pull double throw relay. I'm going to show you how to decipher those symbols on the back of the relay and how to use an ohmmeter so that you can verify which of those graphic symbols goes to which terminal. Then in part two, I'm going to do something that I don't think anybody else has done, and that is I'm going to show you how the thing works using an actual schematic diagram. So we'll pull out the Arduino and we'll use the Blink program in Arduino and we'll connect a couple of LEDs and I'll explain to you how it works both in Tinkercad and on a real circuit schematic. All right, this is the basic relay in Tinkercad, one out of two. The second relay is a little bit more complex and we'll talk about that in another video. But in this video, we'll be talking about this particular relay. And let's see what they call it here. I'm gonna to go to all and then I'm gonna scroll way down and find it, or I could just type in relay to search for it, but for me, this is faster. So here it is. It is a single pole double throw relay. We'll talk more about this spec sheet later on, but I just wanna use it right now just to show you what this relay looks like in real life. So here's pretty much a life-size view of that thing. It's quite small. And here's another view from the bottom there. You can see the pins in most relays, you'll see just a single terminal for the common. In this case, they're showing it to be two terminals. That had me going a little bit at first, and I had to wonder, why is that? So what I did is I took out an ohmmeter to find out if these two terminals were connected to each other. In Tinkercad, we can go find a meter here somewhere. There's one. And let's connect to those two terminals and see what we see. So I'm going to connect one here and just go here real quick and connect the other one over here. And let's check the resistance of that. So I'll start the simulation. Let's click on the R for resistance and let's see what kind of resistance we have. And we have zero resistance between those two pins. So that means they're connected, they're one. And the line here seems to indicate that and the ohmmeter proves it. So that tells us that we can connect to either one, either here or here with our input. We don't have to connect to both and it doesn't matter which one we choose because they're both connected. So then next on the back of this thing, it seems to indicate the coil here would be the next set of pins. And then the normally closed would be this one down here. And the normally open would be this one up here. Let's see if we can prove that. So let's go over to the coil. Let's stop the simulation, delete these. And then let's go over to the, what looks to be the terminals for the coil. And the coil is going to have some resistance in it, but it will be pretty low. So let's run that simulation. And that shows us 125 ohms. Just for kicks, let's try those other terminals and see what they are. Because that, that seems a little high to me. I'll stop the simulation by tapping the letter S on my keyboard. So let's delete these lines and let's go across the last two terminals just to see how much resistance is there. Start the simulation, check for resistance, and it's infinite resistance. So that would seem to indicate that there is no connection between this point and this point. So it appears that these two are the coil. And let's just check this normally closed connection. That should be connected to the common right now. So I'll stop the simulation, get rid of this lead. There we go. So this one's connected to the common, and this one's connected to the normally closed terminal. So let's check the resistance of that. It should be zero and it is zero ohms. So that proves to us that we found the right terminals here. So we know which terminal does what, so we can connect a little circuit and test it out. So let's stop the simulation, get rid of this thing for the time being, and let's connect something for real. Let's connect the Arduino, that's an easy thing to do. Let's just make a light bulb or an LED blink. The um, Arduino has a built-in blink program. Boy, that thing is big. <laughs> It has a built-in program. It's called the Blink program, if you're not real familiar with the Arduino. What it does is it just blinks. It turns on an LED for one second and then turns it off for one second and just keeps doing that forever. 
So let's just try the uh, Arduino. Let's just run it right now so I can show you that. So I'm going to start the simulation. And it plugs in the Arduino, which I think is pretty cute. And then it just has this blink program already loaded up that just blinks an internal LED at a one second interval. So we can pull that out to the outside world and make that work with our little relay. One thing that Tinkercad is a little loose on, and that is current and voltage ratings. So you want to be careful. This is okay. It'll allow us to do this in the Tinkercad program. But if you check the ratings on this relay, you'll see that it draws 40 milliamps. Maximum output for these uh, connectors on the Arduino is 40 milliamps. And so if this thing draws 40 milliamps, uh, you're kind of pressing your luck. But Tinkercad lets us do it, so let's do it. While we're at it, why don't we take a look at the data sheet and see what the specs are for this relay. So if we scroll down a little bit, we'll see how they've coded that relay. Now the Tinkercad relay has got these two things reversed. Is it the data sheet's mistake or is it Tinkercad's mistake? <laughs> I'm guessing Tinkercad reversed these. Anyway, uh, you can just fudge it and you can figure out what's going on here. So the letter designation here is uh, note number two. So the letter designation um, on the relay we're playing with is an R. So we know that the R is going to mean that the contact terminals and coil terminals arranged on the, on the one side, which we did see on ours. And then note number three applies to the number. So our number is a five that's represented here. Note number three, they put down underneath the number that's on the back of the relay. This one would represent a relay that's a 12 volt relay. But if we put our five in there that we see on the back of our relay, that would mean that it's the coil voltage is five volts. So we come down to the chart, we find a coil voltage of five volts, and we can see the resistance of that coil is 125 ohms. Remember, we measured that and came up with exactly that. And the current of that coil, the current draw is 40 milliamps, which we talked about already, which is the the uh, maximum of the Arduino. So it's really not a relay you would want to be using with the Arduino in real life, but in Tinkercad it'll be fine. And then the other two specs for us are not relevant. These are the only three that mean anything to us with that relay. It's a five volt relay. We don't really care too much about the resistance of the coil unless you want to calculate the current draw using Ohm's law. You can learn it by doing your own analyzing. Let's stop the simulation. Remember when we connected this to the, to the coil to check resistance? Let's go there again, and I can't see the terminals here, so don't worry if you can't see them. You just have to hover over them until they light up. So pop quiz, do you remember the resistance? Let's run the simulation. 125 ohms. So we can calculate the current draw of that coil if we just use Ohm's law. And Ohm's law says the current is equal to voltage divided by resistance. So 5 volts divided by 125 ohms. Drum roll, please. 0.04 amps, which is 40 milliamps. The rest of this video is just hooking up an LED and a resistor to pin 13 of the Arduino just to understand the blink program and how you can get pin 13 to blink an external LED. I don't actually demonstrate how to connect the relay in this video. If you understand pin 13 and the blinking LED and the blink program in Arduino, you can just go to part two, where we will actually connect the relay and we will get into some more of the technical details. Let's break this connection and let's do a little circuit. So let's put a little LED in here and a resistor and connect it up. As I mentioned, this internal LED lights and turns off every second. And you could connect to that blinking LED via pin 13 on the Arduino. So let's connect pin 13 to one side of the resistor and let's connect the other side of the resistor to the LED and I have to rotate that to make it fit my circuit here. We want to go to the anode of the LED and then the cathode goes to ground. Whoops, I should have put it on the other side. Let's put it over here so it's not quite the mess. Okay, let's start the Arduino again and see if that works. It works fine here, so there really is no need to put a relay in this circuit. But just to see if it works, let's give it a try. Okay, just to keep these videos from getting too long, I have broken this up now into two parts. 
So check out part number two. I put a card up in the upper right-hand corner with a link, or I put a link down in the description as well. And in part two, we'll connect this relay in a real simple way here on the Arduino with a single LED where there really is no reason to have a relay. And then we'll get more sophisticated and we'll connect the relay to two LEDs and a couple of fans and check out the actual electrical schematic and we'll get a little fancier with everything. And as usual, if you think this video is of any value, please give it a thumbs up. That helps me to know if I'm putting out good stuff or not. And if you want to be notified every time I upload a new video, click on that subscribe button.